Hello everyone, I'm Kristen Toms, Councillor for Division 2. Here are the highlights of the April 27 Sturgeon County Council meeting. The full recap is posted below. First, Mayor Natu proclaimed May 1st to 7th as National Youth Week in recognition of the valuable contributions of youth in our community. We have amazing young people in Sturgeon County who participate in many activities that help make our community better, including volunteering with seniors groups, participating in community cleanup events, fundraising activities, and more. And I encourage businesses and other organizations to look at what they can offer as opportunities for youth to learn and continue contributing to our community. The mayor also declared May 3rd to 9th as Mental Health Week in Sturgeon County. For the past few weeks, Sturgeon County has been running the It's Okay to Not Be Okay campaign to raise awareness of how feeling sad, scared, or anxious is normal. But these feelings can become overwhelming. If you're not feeling okay, or you know someone going through a difficult time, support is available. We have a list of local resources that can be found on our website at sturgeoncounty.ca backslash okay. While there are many resources available, accessing them during a desperate moment can be difficult. This is why Council voted in support of sending a letter to our federal MP, Dane Lloyd, along with provincial MLAs, the Federal Minister of Health, the CRTC, and other local municipalities expressing our support for a three-digit suicide prevention hotline that would combine all suicide crisis numbers into one easy-to-remember number. If you are interested in lending your support for this 988 initiative, you can sign the electronic petition at petitions.ourcommons.ca. Moving into council business, it was a busy agenda with lots discussed, so I will just touch on a few key items. We heard from our auditors who provided an overview of the financial statements from 2020. Sturgeon County ended the year with a $12.5 million operating surplus. This was due to many factors, including unexpected increases in revenues, including federal and provincial grant funding, and decreases in expenses, in part due to the inability to move ahead with some programs and projects due to the COVID-19 pandemic. There is always the question of what to do with a surplus, and there are many approaches that Council can take. Council had already committed to a 0% tax increase for 2021, so we are reinvesting the funds back into the community, focusing on roads, broadband, economic development, safety, increased services, and the environment. The balance was distributed into various municipal reserves that allows the county to access funds for future projects to address urgent and emerging needs. A great example of how municipal reserves are used was demonstrated later in the meeting when Council approved an additional $4.43 million of infrastructure projects for 2021. Projects include addressing issues caused by the heavy rains and floods last year, including a bridge replacement on Township 542 at Range Road 263. We will also be undertaking some road rehabilitation projects along Range Road 254, as well as Meadowview Drive, which I know many people will be excited about. For the past few years, Sturgeon County has had to focus on infrastructure priorities for industrial and economic development. And that has been an investment that has paid off for the county. We can now look at other roadways that need attention. These projects are all being funded from the county's road network and drainage reserves, demonstrating the importance of setting money aside into these reserves so we have access to funds for projects when needed and when the right opportunities come forward. While we put more focus on improving the roads in Sturgeon County, we know that for many people, the commute has changed and broadband is the current road into work or school. Council gave second and third reading to a bylaw authorizing the county to borrow money to move ahead with the first phase of our broadband strategy, a pilot project that will take place in the Villeneuve region. I know many people are excited about this and want to know more, including how quickly they can access better, faster, and more reliable internet. We are just as eager as you are, but we are still in the very early stages of the broadband strategy, and there is a lot to work out. Ultimately, we want to partner with a company that will be able to at least, but likely exceed, the federal standards for internet speeds comparable to what people have in urban areas. The county won't be an internet service provider. Rather, you will have the option to purchase internet services from the private company. We will have more details to share once we've selected a private sector internet service provider through a request for proposals later this year. For more information and to follow our progress, visit sturgeoncounty.ca internet. 
Sturgeon County continues to move forward on its commitment for environmental stewardship. Not only are we looking for opportunities to reduce our carbon footprint by installing more solar panels on county lands and facilities, as we did at the Protective Services Building, but we're looking for opportunities to help property owners make energy efficient upgrades as well. The county will be researching different programs such as the Clean Energy Improvement Program that can help residents and businesses fund energy efficient upgrades repaid through their property taxes. Stay tuned for updates. Following our council meeting, we held an online public engagement session that provided an overview of the Sturgeon Valley development process so far, confirming what the county heard from residents and how the various plans address what we've heard so far. If you missed the April 27th session and want to review the materials, simply visit sturgeoncounty.ca backslash Our Valley. You can also sign up for the upcoming April 29th Call the Panel session on this page. The Sturgeon Valley is a unique area and Council is committed to responsible and sustainable future development. If you have any questions about the Sturgeon Valley project, please contact Our Valley at sturgeoncounty.ca. So that's it for Council updates for April 27th. Be safe, be well, wear your mask, and be kind to each other. We'll see you after the next Council meeting taking place on May 11th.